Hey guys, we are back here with our canvas in our five steps to a fabulous canvas series. This is part four and we are going to add some shading and maybe some texture to our canvas. I may not add a lot of texture to mine. It's already pretty textured but I will maybe show you a few things so that if you want to add some to yours if in the process of layers that you've already done you um, haven't added enough texture and you want some more. Um, we're going to just use a few tools. I've got a small filbert brush here. I've got um, DecoArts Americana stucco tools. And then I have some DecoArts Traditions glazing medium. I have the DecoArts Traditions paint in Indian yellow, aquamarine, and dioxazine purple. I've got the DecoArts Americana paints in Scorching Yellow Neon, Sizzling Pink Neon, Toward Orange Neon, and Electric Blue Neon. Now I don't know if I'm going to use all of these. I might, I might not, but we'll see. We're going to be mixing all of these with the glazing medium to make the colors more translucent so that we're adding shading and color um, to our painting to make it really pop without covering up completely all of what we've already done. Um, I'm just reading the directions and it doesn't really say how much is the recommended to add and I was just looking at that first before I told you guys I do think I want a fairly translucent color of paint at least to start so I think I'm going to do about two-thirds glazing medium to one-third paint or something thereabouts. So definitely more glazing medium than paint. I'm not going to really measure it. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to start with a few colors. So I'm going to start with, oh, is there a seal in there? No. Give it a shake. It's been sitting for a little bit, so let's give it a shake. So before I start the timer, I'm going to mix up some colors or at least get my puddles ready. And I'm going to start with four colors. I know I have a lot more paint out than that, but like I said, I'm not sure I want to use all of this paint. I know I want to use aquamarine. I know I want to use the neon pink. Um, I think I want to use one of the yellows. I think I want to use the neon yellow. And I think I want to use the purple. Um, I think I want to put out the Indian yellow too. Uh, or maybe the, no, maybe I take that back. Maybe the neon orange. So this glazing wood is very more, um, it's very much more, um, more of a solid. I'm used to using um, like a Liquitex glazing medium, which is very much more fluid, almost like water. And I have to say, I think I like the deco arts better just on the texture alone. So we're going to start with those. I've got my baby wipes handy right here. And I'm going to put this here. <sighs> Are we ready? Deep breath. Okay. And let's set the timer. Let's get going. All right. I'm going to start with the turquoise. Aquam I think it's aquamarine. What color is it? Yeah, aquamarine. Okay. And I want to, I think, put it here. the inside of the flower and then I think I want to just use my finger to smudge the line a little bit. Again, just like when we did the neutralizing of the background, I'm not too concerned at the moment about covering up the black lines or any of those marks because at the end 
Um, in the last step, you'll be able to bring some of those back. baby wipe so I can keep my fingers sort of clean. Okay, I'm going to rinse off my brush. And let's see, Ugh, grab my rag. All right. And I'm going to go in now with a neon, a neon. I do like the texture of this um, glazing fluid very much. And I, there's some blue on my brush, so the neon pink's turning a little purple, but I'm okay with that. I like that color anyways. So I'm going to go in here. Oops to stick my hand in wet paint, <laughs> which I already did. <laughs> Oops. Oh yeah, I like that. that. I do think I want to do this though. And I like that because you're using a glazing fluid, you can still see all these marks where we did our stenciling and our collage and things through all these layers of paint. Okay, so next I'm not going to clean my brush off. I'm going to leave the pink on there because I'm going to go straight into purple and the pink will mix nicely with the purple without making mud. If I go to the, from the purple though to the yellow or the orange, I'm going to just get brown. So I don't really want, if you want brown, that's fine, but I don't really want brown. So I'm going to be careful to not do that. And while I'm trying not to think too much about what I'm doing, I am trying, though, to, to keep the paint sort of contained. Yeah, I like that. I like that, but I'm wondering if I need to do this. Oops, not that. I just smeared blue everywhere, didn't it? That's better. 10 minute warning.
looks good. Okay, here's my brush up. Try to get all the purple paint off. Now if you're really concerned about time and you're really struggling with a 15 minute time limit, then you might want to just have one brush for each color and maybe each color in its own plate so that you don't have to worry about um, stopping to clean anything. This is the neon orange. Now the orange is a nice light bright white color. Um, white color. Light, nice light bright color that will indicate sunlight and warmth and make your piece really pop. And I like the idea of some of the old neon orange that was in the base coat sticking through and showing up in our piece along with some of this new color. And yes, you don't just have to stick to the inside. If you get the impulse to add some of the paint around the outside of what you put on here, do that. This, Like I said, this orange is going to indicate sunlight. So I'm going to try to keep it to the same side. So like if my sun was here facing down, then all my shadows would be, I mean my highlights would be on that side. and my shadows would be on the opposite side, and I'll show you how to do that. clean my brush off again and we're going to go in with the neon yellow this time which is again another co color that indicates lightness and brightness and warmth and so we're going to use it on that area of the canvas where we want the to pretend the sun is shining a little bit of it like right there. Okay, we're going to mix some of the yellow into some of the blue and we'll get a green because yellow and blue make green, right? Five minute warning. And we're going to put that green here on the leaf. And maybe use a little bit to just highlight the stem. blend out some of the brush marks with our fingers. So we have like a haze of color instead of just having blocks of color. And I'm gonna just stop getting the impulse to put some down here. Yeah, I like that. So one thing you can do is take something like these texture tools or an old gift card or 
something that's hard plastic. And I like this one, which has teeth on it. Can you see that? There you go. <clears throat> and I'm going to grab, <coughs> excuse me, one of my colors, probably one of my shadow colors, I think. I'm going to go, so the cooler colors on the palette are the blue or the purple, and they would indicate shadow and darkness, or hint at shadow and darkness. The opposite of your orange and your yellow colors. I'm going to put some marks on the canvas and I'm going to leave some of the marks and blend some of them out. You have the baby wipe handy because if you put too much paint on there right away, since your background is dry, you can go in there right away and you can take some of it off. I want to leave some of the lines crisp and I want to smudge some of them. It makes it more interesting. And I'm going to go in with some of my light bright colors. And you can do some things like this. Or you can really make the top of this flower look really fiery by putting this orange color up there. Yeah, I like that. I can take some of the two colors together. And you can go in with your baby wipe your finger again and leave some of the lines intact. Smudge others. Just do it very randomly. That's really nice. Don't be afraid to stand up and step back from your canvas. You have 15 minutes. That's enough time. Make sure you have all your highlights in the right place and they're all on the right side, the correct side. You know, you don't have most of them this way and then one coming from that way. There we go. I like it. I like it a lot. So that is step four. Let it dry completely before we go on to step five. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget that all my copyright notices and disclaimers are in the description below along with my contact information. So if you'd like to send me a comment, a question, or a concern, my email address and P.O. box is in the description below. Also, if you have a product you'd like me to try, you'd like to send me something, my P.O. box is in the description below. Don't forget to please like, share, and, and subscribe, and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself, because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.